Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about kitchen layouts. So first thing, just when thinking about kitchen layouts, uh, there's a study done in Sydney, Australia in 2013. Um, it was a, a kitchen stress test carried out by leading stress psychologist Lisa Walsh. And it was found that a dysfunctional kitchen without consideration of design and quality fittings could be up to five times more stressful than cooking in a well-designed kitchen. I absolutely believe that. And the design of a kitchen is so critical um, to the whole experience of using it. And, you know, really that's, that's why we're here. That's why we're designers is to design highly functional, beautiful spaces. So first thing we want to think about, and there's a lot of them, are some, you know, really important basic codes, because if we don't meet these, these spaces are not going to be functional. So first, thinking about just basic walkways in a kitchen. So um, the recommended minimum of a walkway in a kitchen, so not so much in the workspace, of course, but just walking kind of past or around the kitchen, should be at least 36 inches at an absolute minimum. If we're thinking about ADA standards being incorporated, if there are two walkways that are perpendicular to each other, you know, in this scenario where you're having to turn a corner, for example, like going around an island or something, then one of those should be at least 42 inches wide. So not both 36, um, but one should be at least 42 so that the space is easy to navigate um, and you don't, you don't kind of end up in a pinched scenario. When we're looking in the, the um, kind of work triangle, the functional zone of the kitchen, uh, we see in this example here uh, where we have an island and you know, our cook, cooking surface or sink here in this zone, if there's one cook, if that's the typical scenario, then we can have 42 inches of clearance at a minimum. That's the absolute minimum, 42 inches. And then if we have two cooks, we need 40 eight inches at an absolute minimum in a standard um, residential situation. Uh, looking up here, looking above, um, you can see that if we really want to, you know, make this even better, even a little more functional, right? Um, we're thinking about, you know, one person cooking over here, one on the other side. Um, we really want four feet, six inches. And if we have that, we have edging space, which means, you know, one person can be cooking, one can kind of, you know, sort of scoot sideways by them and they can work pretty comfortably together. And then here, if we actually want to incorporate some true walking space, we really need a distance of five foot four in this kitchen area to have a comfortable working zone for two cooks. And that's actually a, a fairly significant amount of space. And I would say, you know, probably a lot of us don't have kitchens that have that much room, but that would be uh, ideal. If we think about uh, ADA standards and take those into account and you're working towards an ADA compliant kitchen, something you absolutely have to think about is the 60 inch turning radius required for a wheelchair. So the five foot um, diameter listed here on this circle or 60 inches, this is the 60 inch turning radius. That's the absolute minimum that you would need for an ADA compliant kitchen. And that allows someone in a wheelchair to navigate and turn around comfortably. That's the absolute minimum that you have. And you can see over here, we have the T-turning allowances and the space required in these codes to actually make that turn. And we see it sort of separated out here. And then actually here on the right, incorporated into a kitchen space and the amount of space required to navigate. Um, so that's absolutely critical if you're taking ADA requirements into account for a kitchen design. Uh, thinking about uh, your kitchen layout in terms of the prep or work area, um, if we're thinking about the area around a sink, for example, uh, we want to think about a continuous countertop at least 36 by 24 next to a sink. Okay, so the 24 inches is really the depth of, of the countertop, essentially. Um, and then 36 is the width. So you need that much space to really have a functional area next to your sink to, to work. 
Um, and then also, you know, thinking about the ADA standards, um, you know, in, in this scenario, we also need to be thinking about, like we see in this image, the ability to pull up a wheelchair um, in this space. And you actually need a width there then of 30 inches wide uh, to, you know, a minimum again to navigate the wheelchair. And again, just keep in mind that we'd have a countertop at 34 inches max in an ADA uh, scenario. Thinking about dishwasher locations, we just thought about sinks for a little bit. Dishwasher locations are also very important. So your dishwasher needs to be near your sink for plumbing, right? Those are both plumbed things that we need to think about. And you always wanna locate plumbed things together. So you want to locate the nearest edge of the primary dishwasher. You can have uh, multiple dishwashers, Ooh, spelling error there. Uh, but the main dishwasher, uh, the nearest edge of the dishwasher, as you can see here, needs to be within 36 inches of the edge of the sink. Okay, so it's the absolute maximum distance that dishwasher can be away. And then we, we want to have at least 21 inches of standing space between the edge of the dishwasher and any cabinets, um, appliances, you know, anything like that that are at a right angle to the dishwasher as seen here. Whoops. So you want at least 21 inches of space. Um, you don't want these like butted up, um, you know, in your ideal kitchen scenario here. And then um, thinking about ADA standards in terms of dishwashers, it's always fantastic for a dishwasher to actually be raised 6 to 12 inches when possible so that it's not so low to the ground, that it's actually raised up, uh, which will actually give you a condition where you have a raised portion of the countertop, which might raise it up to 42 to 48 inches. So that's a condition that might happen. Um, and it's not just for ADA gu guidelines, honestly. Uh, a lot of you know, people just generally um, really like this so that you, when you go to unload the dishwasher loaded, it's not so low to the ground. Uh, and then again, we need a clear floor space of 30 by 48 adjacent to the dishwasher, right? So that's the, the space required for a wheelchair in an ADA scenario so that you can, you know, easily pull up alongside of it and, you know, load and unload the dishwasher. Uh, thinking about refrigerators uh, a little bit. So, you know, the functional, you know, use of the refrigerator, you're, you know, putting things in, taking them out. Um, we need some landing space that you can set items down. So that'll either be 15 inches on the side of the refrigerator. Um, if it's like a one, um, kind of one door type of refrigerator, um, or if it's a side by side, you want that on either side of the refrigerator would be good. Um, and then if we have a scenario like this where there's an island across the refrigerator and that is to be the landing space, um, you wouldn't want that more than 48 inches away or it starts to get too far to, you know, be functional, be able to hold the door open and, and grab the item. Um, if you have an under counter refrigerator scenario, you want a good clear 15 inches on top of it um, to be able to set items. And then again, we're looking for that 30 to 48 inch uh, clear space for ADA requirements, again, if you're concerned with ADA requirements for your kitchen design, uh, positioned parallel to the approach side of the handle. So it depends which way your refrigerator opens. And then you can draw a center line off of that and center your 30 by 48 uh, rectangle. And then thinking about um, cooking surfaces. So we need, you know, landing areas around our cooking surfaces as well. Um, so we might have, um, you know, like an island situation like we have here. So we want a minimum of 12 inches on one side and 15 inches on the other side, uh, whether it's a cooktop, a built-in range, whatever it might be. And then if you have an island or a peninsula scenario, like not, not butted up to the wall, the um, countertop should extend a minimum of nine inches behind the cooking surface if the countertop is the same height. So that would be a scenario like we have here where we have our built-in range in this case, um, and we have plenty of you know surface on either side and much more than nine inches on the back uh, but that's a condition we're talking about 
Um, it's not required to have that full nine inches. If you have a popped up portion where, where you can sit at, like a bar height um, scenario again. If we're thinking about ADA standards for our kitchen, again, we're thinking of lowering the cooktop down to 34 inches at max height with knee space underneath. Remember, we have a minimum here of 27 inches for the knee space and then a counter height of 28 to 34. And so here's an example of you know, a nice looking um, ADA uh, kitchen scenario. We're seeing you can just pull right up and it's totally open underneath the cooktop and in the sink. So they've like run the plumbing behind. Um, so it's, you know, a really beautiful uh, installation. And just, you know, a couple of, you know, various layouts of kitchens, you know, just to sort of keep in mind that kitchens can come in all sizes, shapes and forms and be beautiful and highly functional. So we have a fairly large one up here with, you know, kind of a standard island, three seats at it, uh, refrigerator, angled cooktop with this, you know, multi-compartment sink and a dishwasher located right next to the sink. Um, a very deep island. Now these drawings, of course, aren't showing a lot of detail. Um, so we don't quite know what the scenario is with this island, but it's a large square shaped island with seating on multiple sides, kind of nestled into that, you know, um, L-shaped kitchen that's sort of even in length on both sides. Um, sort of an opposite scenario here, two L-shaped kitchens across from each other. Uh, in a U-shaped kitchen, you know, with um, an island right in the center. So many, many different configurations are of course possible depending on the floor plan that you have to work with. Um, and we can have uniquely shaped islands. They don't always have to be square, rectilinear. Um, sort of an L shape here with raised uh, bar height seating wrapping around. You can have circular islands or multi-level circular islands and ovals and all sorts of things. Um, we can have corridors running through the kitchen Right. And think about, you know, where do we locate the work zone versus storage, um, if that's the case, because we certainly wouldn't want to be crossing this, you know, with like boiling water and things like that. Right. So we want to, you know, kind of keep those high, you know, high traffic areas out of that, you know, cooking area. Um, and think about, you know, again, the unique shapes that an island might have um, and the space in between the cooking and the sink, for example. We can also have a variety of layouts with um, peninsulas in our kitchen as well. So peninsulas, you know, kind of like an island, right? But it's all joined together, kind of giving us that G shape in a lot of these um, kitchens. You know, really think about, you know, whether it's an island or a peninsula, is it purely for seating? Is there storage involved or is there actual work surface included there as well? Um, you know, so here we have a dishwasher um, in that peninsula portion. Here we have the dishwasher and sink. Um, there's always a lot of options. Um, and as you look at these, you can really think about, you know, which kitchens seem to be functioning a little better and which seem like, you know, geez, that seems like a long walk from the refrigerator over here. Have to measure it out to be sure, but you know certainly that seems like uh, maybe not ideal, right? And then we can have more of a you know either single wall kitchen where everything's you know all along one wall, refrigerator, sink, dishwasher, cooktop, absolutely very common, or a galley style where it's just two straight walls you know across from each other. Uh, many many uh, different options. So just looking at a few uh, examples and sort of thinking about those. So, you know, this uh, kind of beautifully vintage image here, uh, what are some posit uh, positives of this space? Well, you know, we seem to have, you know, a nice amount of counter space between appliances. You know, it looks like a functional kitchen. Um, we actually have a sink here that, although slightly obstructed with this decorative element, you know, allows us to see into interior spaces, seeing the dining room in here. So there's a connection. Um, there's a built-in desk area, right? So that's really handy. Um, you know, and then what are some of the negatives? Well, I don't know. What's, it's kind of an odd space, right? Like what's, what's going on in here? You know, I'm seeing a bench. I don't know what this is. It's like, I, you know, it's kind of an odd maybe sitting room. According to this plan, it's sort of interesting, um, kind of peculiar. Um, it certainly looks like it'd be difficult for more than one person 
at a time to be in here cooking, working, doing dishes. Um, it's, it's, you know, it would be hard for more than one person to really function in that space at a time. We're also seeing things like, I don't know, an inside roof, you know, maybe some design choices that seem a little odd. So maybe not everyone's dream kitchen. Uh, another example, certainly much more contemporary uh, than the last. So again, positives of this space, there seems to be, you know, a nice amount of counter space, um, just in general and between appliances. Again, the sink is facing interior spaces, at least presumably from what we can understand. So, you know, there might be a dining room or a living room over here. So who's ever in the kitchen can, you know, be part of the conversation, whatever's going on. Uh, the refrigerator is actually recessed into the wall. So it's not protruding into the space, but it's built into the wall. Um, so it's very, nice and flush. It's very contemporary. Uh, it's a very contemporary, beautiful space. Um, any negatives might be that, well, it's contemporary and it's beautiful, but it's certainly not a cook's kitchen, right? You know, all our, all of our dishes are exposed. You know, if you make a mess, it's all certainly very exposed. Um, you know, things are quite minimal. And then also, you know, the sink and the range are directly across from each other. They're opposite of each other. So it would be very difficult for more than one person to be in there working at the same time. So it looks really nice, but if somebody was trying to wash dishes or something like that and someone was at the range cooking, they would kind of be on top of each other and it'd be uncomfortable. Uh, a kitchen like this, you know, another, you know, contemporary example. Uh, positives. Well, it seems pretty good overall. Whether or not it's maybe your personal style, the layout um, seems very, very nice. There's a lot of storage opportunities, right? Uh, we have windows, we have a um, built-in refrigerator with storage around it. We have seating. The um, sink, again, is facing out, which is really nice. There seems to be plenty of space. It has a lot of good qualities about it. Um, you know, and a negative might be that, again, the cooking surface and the sink are directly across from each other. It does seem like there's more room in this example, but again, that's not always a good thing and difficult for more than um, one cook or one person at a time. Uh, and then another example. So, you know, pos positives about this space. Well, I mean, it certainly does the job, but there's not a lot of you know, positive things going for it. Um, you know, we really have minimal storage again, um, and, you know, everything's sort of out and exposed, which can be okay, but fairly limited cabinetry. Um, the tile inset that's behind that large range is white and very grooved. So, you know, as a person, you know, cooks with that, they're going to collect a lot of dirt and grind very easily on that. So that does not seem like an ideal choice. Um, the sink and the range are basically right next to each other, so there's very minimal countertops on either side. Um, so there's really very, very little um, counter space. The center island or table that's in the middle seems quite close to the sink and the range, but quite awkward as well. Um, so it seems like that's not you know ideal. It would be hard for more than one person to be in there functionally using that. And also in this view, where's the refrigerator? So it seems like the refrigerator is across the room around that big steel table, which, you know, none of that seems like an ideal, um, well-functioning kitchen by any means. And so that's just a you know, brief look at um, some kitchen layout codes and concepts that we need to think about.